So today is the Passion, first Sunday of the Passion, first Passion Sunday. I'm going to be back here again in Calgary. And the epistle for this uh, first Passion Sunday is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 9. Brethren, Christ being come, a high priest of the good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, neither by the blood of goats or of calves, but by his own blood, entered once into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and of oxen and the ashes of a heifer being sprinkled, sanctify such as are defiled, to the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who by the Holy Ghost offered himself unspotted unto God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And therefore he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death for the redemption of those transgressions which were under the former testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Gospel, taking that according to St. John chapter 8. At that time Jesus said to the multitudes of the Jews, Which of you shall convict me of sin? Now if I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth the words of God. Therefore you hear, hear them not, because you are not of God. The Jews therefore answered and said to him, Do not we say well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you have dishonored me. But I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. The men and men I say to you, that If any man keep my word, he shall not see death forever. The Jews therefore said, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead in the prophets, and thou sayest, If any man keep my word, he shall not taste death forever. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom dost thou make thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father that glorifieth me, of whom you say that he is your God. And you have not known him, but I know him. And if I shall say that I know him not, I shall be like unto you a liar." But I do know him, and do keep his word. Abraham your father rejoiced that he might see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews therefore said to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen our Abraham? And Jesus said to them, And many men I say unto you, Before Abraham was made, I am. They took up stones therefore to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Those were the words of today's Holy Gospel. And the Father and the Holy Ghost, Amen. So we enter now into the sacred season of Passion Tide, and we have this first gospel. We're getting into the great battle, and the battle is the battle of the cross. And we have, in fact, the only great sorrow, the only great tragedy that exists. Now it is, you see on the altar today, that the cross is invisible. It's covered. The cross is covered. And we cannot see it. And the cross is covered on this Passion Sunday from now until Good Friday, until Easter actually. But now until Good Friday we won't see the cross. And also then we drop at the beginning of the Mass, the Utica May. The Psalm 42 is dropped like we have during our Requiem Mass. It's dropped because we don't say we will go to the altar of God to give us joy to my youth. Because there is no joy without the cross. And this truth has to be impounded and, and, and pounded and pounded into souls. There is no joy without the cross. There is no hope without the cross. We'll go to the altar of God that giveth joy to our youth. He says to the priest, I go to the altar of God that giveth joy to my youth. The altar of sacrifice. And this altar of sacrifice does give joy to my youth. There is no youth. And there is no joy when the cross is taken away. And it's interesting how now the world has taken away the cross. The Catholic Church, the mainstream Catholic Church, the conciliar church that's gone against God, the conciliar church has taken away the cross at Vatican II. And they've been taking away the cross for the last 300 years. Slowly taking it away. And as the cross has been taken away, misery has increased in the world. Sorrow and sadness has increased. Now that the cross is almost completely gone, we find there is suicide more than any other time in history 
depression greater than any other time in history. So therefore there's an intimate connection between the covering of the cross and the removal of the Yudhikame. Removal of it from the, end, from the beginning of the Mass. We don't say that prayer at, the, at the, uh, uh, the beginning of the Mass during this Passion Tide. We skip it. So here we are in a time of the great battle. And notice here in the Gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ is not yet at Good Friday. Nor yet at Palm Sunday. And in the Gospel today, it is clear the Jews hate Christ. Just like today, the Catholics hate Christ. We are not to say that they don't hate Him. It's not true to say that they don't hate Him. Notice in the very beginning of the Gospel today, no Pharisees, no Sadducees, no scribes, no Annas, no Caiaphas. None of the bad leaders are there. Because you know that one of the lies that you have learned, and many traditional Catholics have learned, and not only traditional Catholics, but people in the world today, the reason why the church is in a great crisis is because we had a bad Pope named Paul VI. If we had a good Pope, we'd be doing great. The reason why the church is in crisis is because we have wicked bishops and wicked leaders. That's why we're in crisis. That's why there's a terrible situation in the world today. It's the Pope, it's the bishops, and also the priests. The leaders of the church that have turned man away from God. And why are there troubles in America? Because we have wicked leaders. It's because of Obama. It's because of the Clinton. It's because of the wicked leaders, the wicked politicians. Why is there evil in the world today? It's because of the wicked leaders and wicked politicians. So that we might, this, this lie might be taken from our hearts. We have the Gospel of St. John, chapter 8. A great battle in this good chapter. Christ fighting with the multitude of the Jews. It is not the scurifier of Pharisees and Sadducees. At that time, Jesus said to the multitudes of the Jews, Which of you shall convict me of sin? Now he says to the multitude of Catholics, Which of you shall convict me of sin? You accuse me of many sins. Which of you shall convict me of sin? How can you convict me of sin? So you accuse of all kinds of sins. But where are the evidence? You cannot convict me of any sin. Which of you can convict me of sin? The world hates, the Catholic world hates Christ. And we have to face that. The traditional Catholic world hates Christ. And we have to face that. And we cannot blame it on Bishop Fillet, and we can't blame it on Pope Francis, and we can't blame it on the local bishops, and we can't blame it on the wicked cardinals, and even on the wicked council of Vatican II. We were ready for that council. We made those our bishops. We're happy about that pope. We like abortion clinics in our towns. Might need one one day. But we're officially against all those things. But the multitude of the Jews hate Christ. Now remember, this multitude of Jews, they are not the Jews that don't believe in Christ. They're not going to go to his sermons. They stayed at home. These are the multitudes of Jews that have followed Christ. The same ones that followed him in the desert in John chapter 6. The ones that believed in him in the Gospel of St. John chapter 2. The ones that believed in him at the Sermon on the Mount. They've been following Christ for three years. They've seen his miracles. They've heard his sermons. They've been faithful. That every time something's going to grow, every time the great breakthrough is going to happen, every time they want to make him a king, he runs away in the mountain himself alone. He hides himself and walks away. Every time things are looking better, our Lord Jesus Christ says something offensive. He's divisive. We've been following him for three years. Do you think this is the first time we've had a problem with him? We believe in him, of course we do. But I mean he keeps doing things that aren't right. And our Lord Jesus Christ is surrounded by them and he feels their hate and he pulls it out. He sees their poison and he pulls it out. And right now our Lord Jesus Christ is pulling the poison out of the Catholic Church. Alright. I'll give you a new mass. I'll give you the wicked priests you deserve. I'll give you the wicked bishops you deserve. I'll give you the wicked Pope you deserve. And you will like him. And you will follow him. 
When I send you men of God, you will reject him. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. That's what he said. And now he can say to the Catholic Church, Rome, Rome, thou that killest the prophets. You kill those that I sent to you. You don't want the truth. And therefore he says right away, if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe it? One example we mentioned in the earlier sermon today, the New Society of St. Pius X, one of its great outspoken speakers now, very recent times, also from the Holy Land of Kentucky. Father Robinson, born in the same town I was born in. Another Kentucky priest. Now being used as he's a professor in the seminary in Australia. Young priest. And he's being used as a great spokesman to tell us that science and religion, that is modern, wicked, evil science and the true Catholic religion can fit together. This is, convict, can, this is accusing Christ of sin. It's wickedness. Speaking about the integrity of Archbishop Lefebvre, that the real Archbishop Lefebvre wanted, would, would have wanted to be united with modernist Rome, even though this Rome is not returned to God, and this Rome is leading souls to hell. That Archbishop Lefebvre wants to be united under the Rome that leads souls to hell, and the Rome that is turned against God. The same Archbishop Lefebvre that said in the 74 Declaration that we must reject this modernist Rome of, of Protestant and neo-Protestant tendencies. But we have to have a proper look at what Archbishop of the Fev really meant. And we have to have a proper look at science. And a proper look at the, what the modern scientists have really discovered. They know that this, the stars are billions and billions of light years away. So the earth cannot be. No reasonable man can believe the earth is 6,000 years old. You can't have a fundamentalist opinion. And there may very well be evolution. You can be evolution and Catholic at the, evolutionist and Catholic at the same time. And this is accusing God of sin. It's accusing God of sin. And what is the church priest of the church supposed to say? Which of you can convict me of sin? Bring your Darwinian garbage out. Bring it out. Bring your modern psychology of Sigmund Freud out. Bring it out. Bring me your foolish teaching of Galileo. Bring it out. Bring me your modern teaching of there are 73 sexes. Bring it out. Show me the other 71. Show them to me. I want to see them. Let me know. Bring out your, your, your proof that homosexuality is normal. Bring it out. Bring out your proof of your false religions. Convict me of sin. Which of you can convict me of sin? None of you can. We refute all of your lies. We refute all of your arguments. We destroy them all. History, faith, science, true history, true faith, and true science destroys modern science, which is a lie and modern teachings which are a lie, and Catholics want to be comfortable with them. Why? Because it justifies a comfortable life of mediocre sin. Because deep inside, these Jews that are following Christ, they hate Him. Now, notice the conversation today. We're going to go into only a few verses of chapter 8. It's a long chapter. Only a few verses are here. Why do you want to kill me, says our Lord Jesus Christ? You are not, of, you, you, but you do not believe me. He that is of God heareth the words of God. Therefore you hear them not because you are not of God. Because you are not of God. We are not referring to the Hindus, we're not referring to the Muslims, not referring to the Jews that have rejected Christ since the, since two, the last 2,000 years. We're not referring to the Protestants. We're referring to the Catholics. Referring to those who belong to the true church. You that belong to the true church are not of God. We know the others are not of God. They've never been of God because they are there of the devil. They worship the devil. They worship the devil's teachings. They are of the devil. But you are of the true religion. He will say very clearly, he's talking to them a little bit later on. Because... Uh, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father that glorifieth me, of whom you say that he is your God. And you have not known him, but I know him. You don't know him, I know him. He's talking to Catholics. He's talking to the members of the true church. He is not talking to the heretics. He's not talking to the schismatics. He's not talking to the pagans. He's talking to Catholics in the pews. Do you really love God? 
Is the faith really in your blood? You say you love me. You come to church and you don't see the cross and it doesn't bother you. You don't want the cross. You don't want the cross. You took my cross out of your schools. You took the cross out of your government. You took the cross out of your education, all your education in the schools and so on. You took the cross out of, my, out of your home. You took the cross out of your recreation. You took the cross out of your, all the places. And now you're going to take the cross finally out of the church. And that was what happened to Vatican II. They took the cross finally out of the church. But the cross was already being removed from all the other places. And those who removed the cross of Christ from their homes hate Christ. Who removes the cross of Christ from their government? Hate Christ. Notice my own self in the last 15 years, last 20 years. More and more, traditional Catholics, they're upset with the government because the government has taken away our jobs. The government is sending the jobs to China and to Mexico. The government is killing our economy. The government is charging too much taxes. They used to worry about abortion, but they don't worry about that anymore. They accepted that a long time ago. But it affects what affects my pocketbook, I'm disturbed about. And how is this different from the pagans? Do they have the faith? They're still officially against abortion, of course. And they try to vote for an anti abortion candidate if they can. But what you got to do is you got to stop the economic hemorrhage that's going on. They care not about God, they don't want God to rule in their economics, they don't want God to rule in their politics. They don't want God to rule in their homes. But He can still rule in the church. And then they go to church one day and they find that Christ is not in the church. And they're scandalized. And this scandal is a mockery of God. God does not rule in church. God rules everywhere. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not create churches. Our Lord Jesus Christ created every atom and molecule in the universe. He created every man, woman, and child. He created every beast. He created every non-living thing. And every plant. He created every angel. He created all men. He rules all of them. Either in His justice, by His anger in hell, or in His mercy and His love in heaven, or by His divine providence on earth. But He rules. And we that reject that rule, these are the enemies of God that are inside the church, but they still call themselves Catholics. Therefore God allows a purge. Alright, who loves me? Who's going to follow me to that cross? Who's going to see me with me on Good Friday morning? Everyone says they love me on Palm Sunday. And even on this day, they say they love Him. But what happens? At the end of the day, what are they going to do? Without the, inhe without the insistence of a single scribe or Pharisee, they're going to pick up stones to cast at Him. They won't accept that He is God. God rules everything. and We can't accept that. They can't accept that at all. So they're going to have a great conflict. Well, out there, you say you're going to kill us. Do not, do not we say well that thou art a Samaritan hast a devil. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and you have dishonored me. And then I say to you, if any man keep my word, you shall not see death forever. And then they deliberately misunderstand him. He himself said he was going to die and rise from the dead. And Lazarus died, and he rose from the dead by, by the power of God. And he showed his power by rising already many souls from the dead, like the son of the widow of Naim, the daughter of Jairus, and many, many others. He's written, they know that he has the power to raise those from the dead, to show that he has the power to give life after death. But they mock him, and they deliberately misunderstand him, and they twist his words, and they know what they are doing. They are not innocent. Our father Abraham was dead. Are you greater than Abraham? Yes, he's greater than Abraham. And they know he's greater than Abraham. But they are scandalized because he's supposed to be humble, this Jesus Christ. Just like today, the Catholic Church is supposed to be humble. we got a humble Pope. And we're supposed to have a humble church. And the humble church is supposed to say, we are, just, we are doing good for mankind. We are nice. We're not the only true church outside of which there's no salvation. That's proud. We're not the only source of divine truth. That's proud. We wouldn't want to be proud to modern man. They won't accept that. And our Lord Jesus Christ is sought to be proud by these people. You're proud. You're proud. 
And he says, I know my father. And if I said I did not know him, I would be like unto you a liar. And therefore the Catholic priest today must say to the modern world, I know the divine truth. I know it. I know that God created this world in six days. On the seventh day he rested. And there were six 24 hour days. I know that he created every being absolutely perfect. And they did not come by the evil and wicked process of evolution through death and destruction and murder and wickedness. A God of evolution is a wicked God. And our God is the good God. And he's the only true God. And I know that your evolution is from Satan and evil. I know it. I know that the Catholic Church is the only true church. I know that homosexuality is a perversion. I know that you can only be married once. I know that marriage is for the purpose of children and all the children God sends. And you do wickedness when you practice birth control. I know that you must pray your rosary and go to confession and live according to the Holy Roman Catholic faith. I know this, you Protestants. I know this, you Hindus, you Muslims. I know this, you modern Jews. I know this, you atheists. I know this, you pagans. And don't tell me that I must be humble. These things are true. And if I said I did not know them, I would be like unto you, a liar. And here he's referring not to the Hindus and the Muslims and so on, but he's referring to the Catholics. Because Catholics say they don't know they're the only path of salvation. Catholics say they're not sure about creation. Catholics say they're not sure about, about God being the, 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 the necessity of the sacraments. Catholics say they don't believe in the infallibility of the Pope and so on. Catholics say these things... But they don't know. They're not theologians. I'm not a theologian. You don't have to be a theologian to know it's in the Baltimore Catechism. And if I said I did not know, I would be like unto you a liar. And the modern Catholic priest, the modern Catholic scholar, he has to say, I think that it's most likely true and the evidence really demonstrates that our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Look at those hundred soldiers that guarded the tomb. Look at the, the situation there. And the, the, the eleven apostles were cowards. I think the evidence points really to the resurrection of Christ. And I think if you think seriously about it, you'll believe He rose from the dead too. That's what I think. But I'm not going to tell you He really rose from the dead. I'm not going to tell you that unless you accept Him as the true God and true man and His church is the true church outside of which there's no salvation, you are going to go to hell. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to speak like modern scholars who have no certitude and only good evidence and who respect the opinions of others. When St. Thomas the Apostle, as we mentioned many times, went to southern India and he saw the Hindus and the Hindu priests and Brahmin priests, he met them for five minutes. And they were throwing water in the air. And he said, what are you doing? He said, we're throwing God to the water to Brahma. Brahma doesn't like it. Not a very good God. We're throwing, we, your God is a devil. And he said, no one can put water in the air. I can. I will hold water in the air. But I will hold it in the air on this condition. That if you see me hold the water in the air, you will abandon your false god. He's met them for about five minutes. Because your god is a devil. And you will accept my god who is the true god that created the world. And you will be baptized. And you will accept all his teachings. And they said yes. He didn't say he had a different opinion. He didn't say he was going to show them how good it is. He showed them the way it was. The divine truth. And the ways of God have not changed. The truth has not changed. There is only one truth. And here are the men of God, the apostles, not the apostles, multitude of the Jews, they reject it. So we must accept the truth. And this great tragedy these last two weeks before Easter, that man who says he belongs to God no longer sees the cross, no longer believes in its infallible truth, no longer believes the Lord Jesus Christ conquered our heaven and earth and rules everything. No longer believes those things. We must pray that, uh, that, that God keep a soul, some souls faithful to Him and we be amongst those souls and that we accept firmly His holy gospel even in this time when those who say they believe in Christ actually simply want to put Him to death. Remember our Lord said, the time will come when they shall kill you thinking they do a service to God. What are the Catholics saying to Christ? We know thou art a Samaritan, a stranger, and hast a devil. This is what they say of us today. You're a Samaritan. You're not a Catholic. 
You have a devil. You're not obedient. Do they believe they're telling the truth in their heart of hearts? Absolutely not. They know they're lying. Do they think that we are wrong? When they analyze and put pray in their nights and when they're alone in their consciences, absolutely not. They know we're right. We communicate the gospel of the last 2,000 years. In fact, of the last 6,000 years. And they will remain until the end of time. And it is most true, the words contained in the sacred scriptures, and they are for the salvation of souls, and those who reject them cannot be saved. And the church's truth of the sacraments, and the church's truth of its teachings, remains the same until the ending of time. And so let us remain firm in that teaching and not lose the faith as many of those who say they belong to Christ have already done. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.